Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The city of Kansas City, Missouri saves energy every time its vehicles hit the roads. The city won the top prize at the North American Green Fleet Awards in Sacramento. The city's fleet includes 271 vehicles that operate on compressed natural gas, 46 electric vehicles, 12 hybrids, 6 liquefied petroleum gas vehicles, and 6 industrial tricycles. Yes, I said tricycles. The city of Kansas City has invested for nearly 20 years in its alternative vehicles, reducing air pollution and saving millions of gallons of fuel annually. In fact, a whopping 26% of the total fuel used annually by the city fleet is compressed natural gas. The city has around 300 vehicles that run compressed natural gas, uh, and that's counting the 35 buses that are up at the airport. Uh, the reason why the city began using vehicles to run on compressed natural gas is for really three main reasons. Natural gas vehicles are cleaner, they're uh, more economical, and the natural gas is produced domestically right here in America. And that's the three major reasons why we use these trucks. Uh, for every gallon of compressed natural gas we use, we save about two dollars. So overall, annually, the city saves a million dollars in their fuel cost using compressed natural gas vehicles. The award also took into consideration the operating procedures of the Fleet Services Division, which has implemented numerous sustainable practices. This includes a paperless work order system, which saves 11,000 pounds of paper annually, a 25,000 watt solar panel array installed on the roof of a large repair facility, and eight shop heaters powered by recycled oil, which saved more than 18,000 gallons of traditional heating fuel last winter alone. Now back to those tricycles. Fleet technicians at the 18th Street Maintenance Facility use tricycles to save time and fatigue while delivering vehicle parts in the large complex. The tricycles are so successful that six more are on the way. Each tricycle saves the city more than $2,000 a year. The cold winter weather is here, so the Water Services Department reminds residents to take precautions to keep pipes from freezing and bursting as temperatures drop. These tips include keeping a thin stream of water running from a bathroom or a kitchen faucet and leaving cabinet doors open below the faucets to let in heat from the house. It's also a good idea to insulate pipes or faucets in unheated areas using pipe wrapping materials from the hardware store. You should also know the location of your master shutoff valve in case your pipes break. Otherwise, emergency water cutoff service is available from the city for a fee. Call the 311 call center for emergency service. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Every year, KC Parks plans a wide variety of winter holiday events, and this year is no exception. The Fairy Princess returns to the Kansas City Museum at Corinthian Hall to spread holiday cheer the first three weekends of December. Your child can share their holiday wishes with the Fairy Princess and get a picture taken. You'll have fun making holiday arts and crafts and hearing stories from local storytellers. And don't forget to pick up a sweet treat before you go. Visit KansasCityMuseum.org for all the details. Take a break from the present and experience a 19th century Christmas with a visit from St. Nicholas on Saturday, December 6th at the Shoal Creek Living History Museum. Enjoy a walking tour through holiday decorated homes and log cabins while reenactors bring the village to life. Experience a Civil War encampment, warm up by the pot-bellied stove, and conclude your visit with a horse-drawn sleigh ride through the rolling hills of Hodge Park. This event is $5 a person and free for those five and under. Visit caseyparks.org for more information. Santa is returning to several Kansas City parks this holiday season. Spend an evening celebrating with festive live music, entertainment by the Starlight Stars and Rock and Rob, light displays, and of course, a visit from Santa and his friends. The events are free and take place at Gillen Park on Friday, December 12th from 6 to 8 p.m., at Penguin Park on Saturday, December 13th from 4 to 6 p.m., and at Longview Tract on Sunday, December 14th from 4 to 6 p.m. 
Details at caseyparks.org. Speaking of Santa Claus, did you know that he can ice skate? See him in action at the Lime Creek Community Center on Saturday, December 20th from 2 to 4 p.m. Children are invited to skate with Santa during his annual trip to the ice arena. Admission is $6 per person, $2 for skate rental. For more information about these and other events, visit the Parks and Recreation website at kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Hi, my name is Alicia Cole and I'm the Volunteer Museum Director at the Battle of Westport Visitor Center and Museum in Historic Swope Park. This weekend we're celebrating the sesquicentennial, that's right, the 150th anniversary of the Historic Battle of Westport. It was the largest battle west of the Mississippi, the largest cavalry battle, and even more importantly, it was the first time an African American unit of soldiers was led by an African-American commander. There will be this weekend, we have a series of battle reenactments. We have encampments that you can go through. We have a children's area with all kinds of act activities. We also have a field hospital, an embalming surgeon, one of the largest displays of medical equipment, and we have the director of the Civil War Medical Museum from Frederick, Maryland here. We have People playing historic figures from the time of the Civil War, like Jesse James and Robert E. Lee. And, oh yes, we have that wonderful African-American commander. Uh, his name was Lieutenant Patrick Minor. So you can come out and learn all about the role that African-Americans played in this amazing battle. There's a rumor going around that there actually was a woman at the Battle of Westport dressed as a male soldier and I've heard rumors that you might be able to find her in the encampment of soldiers. But you'll have to look hard because she apparently does a very good job of disguising herself as a guy. And what do we got going on this weekend? Uh, this weekend we're uh, portraying the Battle of Westport which was the largest battle west of the Mississippi uh, in which Sterling Price came up out of Arkansas with Missouri troops and tried to retake Missouri uh, and was finally defeated here at the Battle of Westport. And then he retreated back into Arkansas. And what would you like for visitors or young people to take from an event like this weekend? Well, I would like to let them see uh, exactly, get some experience on what it was like to be a soldier in the Civil War and, and to experience uh, the, the hard work it was. Uh, uh, in, in most instances, people, the young people today won't understand uh, what went on and what a soldier had to do. And sometimes it was boring, sometimes it was exciting, uh, sometimes it's just sitting in camp and drilling and playing cards and getting to know your fellow soldiers and uh, going on the battlefield, that's a different story. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of nerve, and a lot of knowledge. Uh, to be a, a, especially a, a soldier in, in, in the Civil War. We have activities and programs. You can call us up or you can look for us on our website. It's thebattleofwestport.org. Now if you're still looking for information about the reenactment, check battleofwestport150.org and they'll fill you in with all your questions. The city's fall curbside leaf and brush collection allows residents to leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb for pickup. Did you know that raking up those leaves helps prevent clogged up stormwater pipes? That means you are helping to prevent backups in your own neighborhood every time you participate in the annual leaf and brush pickup. Residents who live in the city's central zone will receive that collection the week of December 1st. Residents in the south zone receive collection the week of December 8th. And in the North Zone, collection happens the week of December 15th. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.gov. For more information about any of these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for The Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of The Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.